Okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I hope um, uh, you can hear me clearly. But usually, Sabah line is not that not that impressive. <laughs> Very good. Um, so I was asked to uh, answer two simple questions. Uh, basic preparation for Pachaba, how early should you start? Thank you, everyone. So, uh, two simple questions. I'll start by the basic preparation. Uh, usually, Chao Long will ask me, uh, I'm speaking from my son, will ask me how many volunteers do I need? How many Pachas do I need? So to find out that it depends where where do you where are you contesting? You have to find out how many polling stations there is and how many polling streets, which is that all right. <coughs> um, of course the, the the best we we recommend is to have shifts. So maybe you have uh, one pa and one cha. And even better, you have one bar. But if you really cannot uh, have, have enough volunteers, then go for minimum. So one ketua pacha for the whole police station or even the whole, uh, whole district or something like that. Which is not recommended because uh, if you, there's a distance, there's, there's no way you can travel from one place to the other place to solve the problem. Ketua should you know, have at least one Ketua Pacha in every polling station so they can help uh, the Pachaba to solve their, their, their problem and even solve the Pachaba duties and make sure they, they are on duty. Uh, so minimum one polling station, one ketua pacha, one uh, streams. You have one new agent or one one bar in the polling station. Uh, it really depends how many volunteers you can get, back. but that's that would be the minimum one. So let's go to the uh, examples. We'll go to the example. I picked uh, Spamga because I know this channel worked really hard to campaign uh, during his election. It's an uh, Inanam candidate. So he has 11 police centers. And do you want to guess how many volunteers he sent to my training? One. He only sent one person to my training and that person has to jump out like 11 cooling stations and you have minimum six streams in one cooling station and because of the COVID you don't just have six streams some even go to 10 streams you have to find out from the EC how many streams are station. So that's the ba basic calculation. You need seven, uh, seven, seven minimum of pacha and six times six streams. You got 45, 42 pachas and plus the ketua pacha. So that volunteers for Karabun night. Then you have Dara, 56 volunteers, and the next one, 11 police station. We need minimum, that's the minimum of minimum, is 77 volunteers. So that's, that, that's already the minimum. You have more streams, then you have to add it up. So you can imagine some of, some of the place you need like 300, 400, 500 of volunteers to really secure your, your your polling station and your cell run. Uh, so that's how I prepare our challenge on this. Then I'll go to the second question, uh, training your volunteers in advance. 
If you know, you need to train so much volunteers. You have to plan it out. You cannot train 500 like uh, in one day. How many volunteers can you actually train one day? Then you have to plan it out. How early you should get uh, start to train your volunteers. So recruit as much volunteers as you can. Uh, because there's no more phone usage in uh, Saluran, it used to be we'll just want, we'll just get anyone and we'll, we'll support them by phone within WhatsApp. They can ask questions on uh, the problem, so they are, they don't need to be fully trained. But since there's no phone usage anymore, they really need to get themselves to understand all the procedures that they need to do their duties, how to solve certain scenarios and things like that. They need to be trained. They need to be well trained. You need to get to prepare them to use like the printed copies of laws. Sometimes you, the confidence comes from how confident for the Pacha to run the UT is how well they know about the law. What is uh, what what laws support them to do so? So the the printed laws, uh, the election law, and these are the tell them how to use all this law. It's very important for for all these uh, trained Pacha. Of course, they need to know their Pacha kit as well. Uh, what, what are the party, the political party giving them for their Pacha kit uh, to help them fulfill their duties? Some politics have limited funds, so they probably will just give you a ruler and a pen or something like that. Then. Too bad. So uh, the earlier you can get, probably you can get someone to sponsor you on the Pacha kit. It's not hard to. And it's not expensive to prepare a chakit. Um, we'll go to the next question. Why do we need to recruit as much volunteers as possible? Because we need to filter them. Not everyone is qualified. Not everyone is uh, fulfilled their qualification. As Danish showed you just now, not everyone is heaven. Uh, it's not a background. We have break some laws and it, it disqualified them. So you really want to recruit as much volunteers as you can. Um, so and also you have it's best that you have a backup list. Uh, so if they suddenly drop off or they they got positive in that, you have someone to replace them. So you need a backup list of your your volunteers, keep the list of contacts of your volunteers, build trust. Uh, you can't just recruit anyone that you don't trust with your, uh, probably your form 14 to hold your form 14. You want, want someone to be trust, uh, trustworthy. So continuous training, there's no way you can uh, Fully, you can fully train in one day. It's it's quite it takes it takes me three years to actually understand the whole the whole procedure of the election, the pulling the the pulling process. So for Pacha to really know confidence to run their duties, it needs more than one day of training. So you really have to plan it out how 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 long before. You, you can have enough volunteers for your channel. Then we'll go to the next one. The earlier you start, the more chance you have enough uh, volunteers. The main reason you have to start early is because you don't have enough trainers. In Saba, I think only two, well, uh, two trainers that really understand, uh, that really can qualify them. Uh, the others, they, they follow some of the sites from, from Invokes. Uh, they, they do some of the PKR training, yes. Those are very political uh, biased uh, training, which is not neutral. They probably doesn't really understand the law as well. 
So unless you you really understand like how like how data Malaysia will really, really communicate with the update uh, condition of the EC, we can we can update your volunteers. But there's no way I can train uh, like in GE14. I have to train continuously one week and two two training in a day, and it really. Uh, <laughs> it's really very tiring to train so many people in uh, in a week, and I don't know how many of them actually can catch it in one lesson in four hours. Uh, so it's very limited uh, knowledge that you get. So I'll take one one example from a very good candidate. The only person I know that is fully prepared before nomination date. The, the Luyang DAP and 16, uh, he, he actually started his training three months before nomination date. So you know why three months? Uh, people, you can't, uh, working day or working hour, you can people to come. So it's like every weekend and uh, training. So it's uh, very well planned. His volunteers is so much, everyone only have to come for two hours. He, he even have a backup list of volunteers. So in case anyone absent, he can just replace it. That is how prepared uh, this candidate is. Uh, he's the only person I know. And the reason I can do that is because he know that he will be interested. Most of the problem with uh, prepared challenge is they, they, they don't know if they will be appointed by the political party, which delays the whole process of starting to recruit the volunteers. And that is really bad example. I think political party despise who you are going to appoint. You should really start recruiting your volunteers as early as you can. Okay. So, uh, well, there are, it's not easy to get volunteers. So some, some suggestion I have, uh, which I tried before, is here. How do you manage four interests for Pacha signs up? Okay, uh, first, free drinks and food and drinks. <laughs> Usually, um, if you want to attract people from the kampong or from any size, you need food and drink, you count for food, free food and drinks. Uh, one of the way is I invite different leaders, NGO leaders or political party leaders. Uh, so you let them talk and their followers will come up. So that's how you have to, you have to attract them to come and get trained. So you have to equip them with, and also take part in, in NGO events. NGO is constantly looking for activities to fill their events. Sometimes they have a whole day of events and they, they are looking for activities. And one of these training can be, since it's a neutral, of course you can invite uh, all the people to give training to the participant. It won't be a lot, but it will help. Uh, okay, and the constantly social media exposure as well. People are only interested in things that they heard of. They, they, uh, it's like advertisement. Uh, you, you keep hearing, like, you will think of, oh, maybe today I'll have a McDonald's or something. So it, it needs to have a constant need exposure or maybe make it a weekly regular event. That was in, I remember Tindak started in 2013. We have weekly uh, Saturday and Sunday in, uh, in Putrajaya, is it? No, no, uh, but, but, uh, Pataling Jaya, sorry. So we, 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 we rented the home and uh, it's a weekly training. Despite how many people come, we continue training. Uh, it becomes a weekly event. Okay. So next. Uh, 
So, of course, even though you have already all you can, you try uh, maybe three months before nomination day, but you still don't have enough volunteers. Well, unfortunately, you have to be selective of which salon you have to concentrate on, which publication is more competitive. Um, and maybe Ketua Pacha, one Ketua Pacha, of all the politicization. If you don't even have the club, well, what you challenge really have to take up the job, really, unfortunately. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, highly, high competitive. Maybe there's a lot, it's hot sea, and there's a high population. Mm. Okay, and the, the next one I want to say about is we, we it used to be we don't focus on Saluran 1 because uh, that was the senior citizen Saluran where uh, the stimulation and that's problem uh, all the senior citizen probably doesn't want to do any big dodgy. But since uh, G14, I think G14 or uh, the Saburan one takes up uh, OKU or people with dis disabilities uh, to, to vote. So it becomes more voter in Saburan one. You really have to start from Saburan one, then you pick up which one, the next one uh, with the uh, more, more more, more, more voters in them, then you then give up those with uh, less voters. This Sabaran. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you can really uh, be that choosy anymore. Okay, uh, next suggestion will be connect with other election related NGOs. Because they already have a group of people that is interested in election. So it's best that we can work together, especially in uh, maybe small elections, not the GE. Uh, but see, we have a group of people engage of what they did not Malaysia. And if we, you don't want us to trip, it's okay, you can also request uh, SPR, they have a department called Academy Pilihan Raya. You just write to them and request for uh, a training and you will know. It's good that you, you ask SPR to train you because anything that is different practice from what they train, you can question them. So it's because they are the one that run the, the, the election. So, if the training is from them, they cannot uh, against what they are trained. You can also question them uh, during the, the, the training. You can get first-hand information from them. So it's good. Their, their academy is very efficient and very professional in what they train. So that's all from my, my share. Back to you, Danish.